Testing, testing, testing. JB here, JB here. June 15, 2022. Hope everybody's doing outstanding. On Fed Day, very, probably one of the biggest Fed days that I can remember, at least in recent memory, although every time we had a Fed meeting, it was hyped up as the next big catalyst. But it will be interesting to see what's uh, what's going to happen here today. So uh, going to be really quick here. We have about 14 minutes, 13 minutes, 45 seconds to the open. Let's see. So first I'll talk about uh, Dust, PPT. I'll talk about you and uh, Roku and, and go from there. But um, first, after the close, well, not near the close yesterday, I was looking for a, a hedge and I've played Dust many times over the last five to 10 years. Because it provides a great hedge. If the market sells off, miners are going to sell off, dust goes higher. If the market stays flat, gold goes lower, dust goes higher. And then you have the double whammy that if gold goes lower and uh, the market goes lower, it uh, just exacerbates the move in dust. So looking for a hedge yesterday as we, we were heading near the close. We have the Fed today, which might have some implications in, in regards to the dollar and commodities and, and obviously equity prices. So I went and got the... the the dust calls as a speculative play. They expire Friday, so don't have a lot of time, and it has to move uh, quite a bit. It's already gapping down this morning as gold is finding a bid. So that was kind of the thought process there. I'll just hold those as a hedge. Who knows, after 2 o'clock today, things could get very volatile. So even though uh, dust, and I don't even see what the last uh, the gap on here, yeah, it's, it's down 80 cents. So it's going gonna, it's gonna to be down over 5% or so on a gap down, but it could reverse course. So we'll have to see how that plays out here today. But that was kind of the thought process on, on Dust and why I added that. Then on the other side is BPT. BPT is the the trust that pays Divi uh, every every quarter based on the, the amount of oil that's produced in that Alaska field. I forget. I mean, it's called Bruto Trust because that's the field. And when oil stays above a certain threshold, which it, it used, I think it was $62. I have to go back and look. But the, the longer it stays over here in the 110, 115, and even 120 level, that the higher the dividend's going to be this, this next quarter, you start doing the math and it's paying a 30, 40% dividend yield. So I think people are starting to realize that the stock is very volatile. So 25 uh, started, I th did it hit 27 on Friday? Let's see if I can pull this up. Of course, I don't have it right in front of me. Um, 2608 was the, was the high on Thursday. Tried to get into 25's Friday found resistance. Monday opened at 24, all the way down to 21 before trying to bounce. And then yesterday tried to get over 25, couldn't couldn't get above and, and sold off. But I think once it gets over 25, it's gonna be mid 20s, possibly higher in the next week or two. Still have some July 25's, added some July 30's, kind of a, as a speculative play, because I think there's gonna be some, there's gonna be a parabolic move. At some point, we've turned out the sellers down in the single digits and teens. As those folks are gone, there's going to be new buyers as people start to, to flock to, to higher dividend payouts. And I think that's some of the reason why IBM's doing well recently. And I, I think it's going to be into maybe 30, 35, 40, maybe even higher. So um, back in the day, I used to trade at the, the BPT was at over 100 bucks. And some of the bearish narrative around it was that eventually that field was going to uh, not produce oil anymore. So when that happens, the, the trust will dissolve. <laughs> and if you're holding the stock, obviously not, it's not a good thing. And then the other part was that uh, there's a rolling uh, price of oil threshold. So each each year they, or I think I think it's every year, they raise the, the, the what the base, the, you know, the cost basis is for, for the, for oil. So it used to be 30 bucks, it used to be 40 bucks. So as long as oil was over 40 bucks and pay a dividend, now it's 60 bucks. So to, you know, 2020 with COVID, oil you know, dropped into the 20s. BPT didn't, didn't pay a dividend. They, they came to a point where it was very close that they were going to be dissolved because it's in their um, you know, corporation letter or whatever that if, it's, if they don't pay a dividend or if the price of oil is under that threshold for two years or, or something to that effect, the, the trust will be dissolved. Now here, here we're in a situation I don't think anybody could really have uh, foreseen. We, just two years ago, oil was, you know, t tankers were sitting out in the middle of the ocean. There's no no demand, so we had demand destruction. Nobody was driving anywhere. Everybody's working from home, things like that. And then, you know, you have something like a BPT, which got destroyed. Now it's the flip side. And who knows if oil is going to stay up in the, in the hundreds over the next couple months or so. 
but I think it's it's not a situation where we're going to see a drastic reduction in the price of oil pending any kind of ceasefire in the, with the the war in Ukraine. Even that, I don't know if that's going to bring down the price of oil um, substantially to the point where BPT won't um, won't be higher from here. So I kind of like the risk reward there. I'll continue to look for opportunities to play BPT for for upside. But the only issue, it's been volatile. So you have to have a stomach for holding on for something that was at 26 bucks on, on Thursday down to 21 bucks on, on Monday. Um, those are not the type of swings that are easy to, to, you know, to handle. But I think it, at some point, you know, I'm looking further out and I think it's going to be higher than mid-20s, possibly over 30 in, in the coming weeks and months. Uh, that's the thought process there. And so I've, I've said this before. And, you know, if you trade back in 2008, 2009, back in the... Summer 2008, oil was $120 a barrel. I think it was the last time it was uh, over 120 bucks. Nobody was really talking about uh, the possible, you know, housing crisis. People doing all these shady, you know, collateralized debt packages that they were selling off to people. Nobody knew, knew about that. So there wasn't there wasn't a concern that we were going to have this massive crash heading into October. And sure, we had Bear Stearns, and you know, before that was. Um, well, Lehman Brothers before that was Bear Stearns, but even when Bear Stearns happened, I don't think people were were that concerned. Flat, fast fast forward to 2022, and and there's such a narrative right now that the market could crash another 50 percent just based on inflation, based on higher costs, asset uh, prices uh, dropping, um, you know, cryptocurrency, the, the huge bubble in crypto cryptocurrency. So I think there's all this. You, you can create a narrative where the market drops 50 percent, but I think that. All those scenarios, the, the cards are already on the table. Everybody knows that's out there, right? So t- to me, the unknown is what what I think is to fear as opposed to the known. And, you know, the further we f- we drop, maybe, you know, if it's the margin calls, people have to start really starting to liquidate. Um, the other concern is the wealth effect. So as the market's been on this massive bull market, all the asset classes rose, equities, you know, the rise of cryptocurrency, even gold is up, I don't know, 8% on a... Um, annual basis for the past 10 years but as that starts to slip back down people instead of feeling wealthy will not feel wealthy anymore and they'll start paring back on on uh, things that they were they were doing going out to dinner travel um, non-discretionary items streaming services things like that so you know some of that you would would say we would be bullish because then it's going to slow demand down a little bit and then inflation kind of finds a peak and then we can start to normalize things and the Fed doesn't have to go too crazy like they did back in 1980. Um, so hopefully that's kind of, you know, I don't want to see a, a huge recession or a serious issue like that. And you, you hope that home prices stay somewhat fairly valued to where they are now. Those don't come crashing down. Those will be the scenarios where I think maybe we can find some kind of footing and the market finds finds a bid and, and then maybe we turn for a while. But if not, then obviously things could get a little little worse. But if the Fed comes out with a with three quarter percent rate hike today at two o'clock, so you'll have the statement at two o'clock. You'll have Fed Powell, Fed Chair Powell at two thirty, hopefully, you know, able to ease the market concerns. I think the market can 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 rally off of a three quarter percent rate hike because I think people are they're kind of they're saying, hey, Fed, you got to do more, you got to do more, and if they're able to to paint that picture where, hey, we're going to be really aggressive to be we get inflation down, even the comments, I think, will, will bring inflation down. So uh, names that I'll be looking, you know, obviously Roku has been destroyed last, last week. You had the, the rumors, there was a, you know, Business Insider was, was saying that there's a talk within the company that there's going to be a buyout uh, from Netflix, which is, I think, it kind of makes sense. Stock went all the way up to, I don't know, it was 102, 103, all the way back down to the 70s. So that's a name I think can get into the 80s if, the market finds some kind of squeeze today, and you know after the Fed meeting, uh, you I love you. I think in mid mid to upper thirties, possibly forty until the end of the week if the market finds some footing, and then Spotify. I think it's the second or third upgrade Spotify has had over the last week or two. A name probably you know, one hundred five, one ten possible if there's uh, some kind of a bid. And then on the flip side, I'm probably you take a look even on Monday sell off. If you had had the Google puts. On Friday, you made 100 or 200 percent on the puts, but the risk was insane. You had to spend like five bucks, uh, f- and the puts went up to ten bucks. So that's a lot of risk to, to be putting on, and, and then you had to get the and, and you got the huge move. Normally, a five, six, seven percent downside move on one day for Google would put the puts up 
500,000% even more, and that's not the case. So the risk reward on the put side just just doesn't jive with me. It doesn't, uh, I can't I can't find some of the names that I think, even if they do fall, I can't find de decent risk reward set up. So I'll just sit on my hands on those names and look for for uh, short-term bounces on inexpensive and, and look for inexpensive calls to play for upside. So that's kind of the thought process there. I'll try and get on audio later. I haven't been on much because there's not really too much to talk about, uh, especially I'm not in puts and I'm, um, you know, I'm not saying I don't think there's a possibility for more downside, but I'd rather, and I put this on the watch this the last couple of days, I'd rather play short-term calls uh, for, for inexpensive short-term calls for upside because um, that just seems to be a little, you know, it's, if the market sells off, it seems like there's there's bounce opportunities. And let's see if I can get off here in a second. Anyway, so that's kind of the, that's kind of my thought process. And at the end of the day, too, you have to think there's there's money always going into the market. You have all these passive investments, 401ks, pension funds, um, you know, investment advisors take taking money and have to put it to work. So uh, that kind of offsets some of this downside. So once there's some kind of consolidation, I think there's a room for a little bit of bounce. Maybe we go lower after that. Who knows? But that's kind of what, what, what I'll be looking for. Anyway, let's have a great day, folks. I'll be back. Rock and roll.